What is up everybody? It's me, Gina Bianca, and today we're gonna go ahead and show you a little sneak peek of my latest mastermind video. If you're not a part of the Network Mastermind, it's my online education and coaching group for hairstylists and salon owners and educators. And this is just a, a condensed version of our video. So we're gonna do some highlights today. I'm gonna go through a whole bunch of amazing info. And if you wanna watch the whole video, feel free to join mastermind or just continue watching here in YouTube. Hope you guys have an amazing day and enjoy the video. All right, so this is my beautiful guest, Dana. We've done her hair a gazillion times, and she's known for her chunky, bold, gorgeous highlights. She's actually one of my top favorite guests to do because I love this look, and the reason I love this look so much is because guests who have bold, gorgeous hair, people are always complimenting their hair. It's a great opportunity for referrals, and I just love chunky highlights. Some people aren't a fan of them, and I think it comes from the old stigmas of the chunky highlights that like weren't really done that great, but when they're done right, they look so good. So we're gonna do her hair today, and the last time we did it, we went in and we did back-to-back -back highlights, back-to-back -back lowlights, and we did six highlights, six lowlights, six highlights, six lowlights, six highlights, six lowlights, six highlights. So that was my pattern for her hair. Her goal this time, can you actually pull up your inspo pick? Her goal this time is to lighten up this low light and to go more primarily blonde with a low light. And this is the picture that she showed us, which I absolutely love. And as you can see in the photo, the highlights still come up to the root, but the low light is not as dark. Typically I use a 5NN, 5N, and I do use permanent on her hair. That is one of my tricks for chunky highlights is to use a permanent with 15 volume because it's not gonna fade and it's not going to run in the shower and like tone everything. I feel like when I use a Demi, sometimes it kind of fades out and marries together and you lose the contrast. So today my strategy is gonna be to go in and do back-to-back -back highlights, back-to-back -back lowlights, but I'm gonna add an extra highlight. And before we get started, I'm gonna lighten her low light too, but before we get started, we're gonna do a Malibu CPR treatment. And the CPR treatment is gonna help lighten everything so that we are going in with a super fresh canvas. And so we can make sure that her low light isn't light up here, dark down here. So I'm gonna try to remove some of the color to make it the best result possible. It's gonna be amazing. I cannot wait and let's get started. All right, so we're starting off with a Malibu CPR treatment. And if you're a stylist behind the chair, I'm sure you've tried this treatment before, but it's just a great treatment to use before color service to give you a nice squeaky clean canvas. I'm gonna post a longer video about how to do this treatment so that you can watch it and learn how to use it, but I definitely recommend it for color corrections. All right, so we just finished her Malibu treatment. And if you wanna take a look, it didn't move her color like crazy. It did shift it a very, very tiny bit, but my biggest concern is that the hair is squeaky clean and ready to accept the color properly. So I mix my lightener one to a little bit more than one and I really love that consistency. It's like a little bit thinner than frosting. I use a lot of different lighteners and I'm not really like super loyal to just one. So if you have a really good lightener that you like, try mixing it one to a little bit more than one when you want that like smooth consistency that you can blend and feather. I really love that consistency. The thicker your lightener is, the stronger it is. The thinner your lightener is, the weaker it is. The lift is in the lightener. So what I'm doing for her sectioning, it actually took a little while to make the perfect section. I really just created a mohawk section with her part somewhere in the middle. And I wanna follow my footsteps here. I wanna touch it up and not highlight all different areas. I wanna just follow my footsteps and do a really good touch up. So it took me a little bit to get that perfect mohawk, but once I did, I just really made sure that everything was in that mohawk section so that when I go in and foil it, I'm just going in and touching up. All right, so here, we don't really have to focus on getting it all the way up to the root. The only purpose that would serve is if we were doing like a full, full, full highlight and she wanted to be full blonde. 
but she doesn't. She likes the dimension. So what I'm gonna do is tease it, glue where I want my saturation to begin and make sure I am saturating this section. Because if you don't saturate, it's gonna be orange. We do not want orange. She does not come to us for orange. So we're gonna make sure that we saturate. And then I'm gonna blend it up. The tease will do the rest of the work. And then I'm gonna close up the foil. You don't have to fold it all the way up if you don't want to. You can fold it a little bit longer. I'll show you how to do that in one sec. But I really want these to be on the chunkier side coming forward. So I'm just gonna go back to back slices. If you wanna leave it so that you don't fold it, which could give a better result because the hair isn't crinkling, you can go ahead and take two foils and I'm using the Framar Big Papa foils. I'll put my link below for you. If you join Mastermind or if you're in Mastermind, you get 10% off Framar. Just find the code in our group. So I'm gonna go ahead, blend it out. And then I'm gonna take my foil from the other side and close it up. So it's another way that you can fold it. Perfect. So we're just gonna repeat the same exact thing on the other side. So I'm gonna be starting in the back here for her mohawk. You can start in the front if you'd like to, but I'm just gonna go through and do what's comfortable for me. I'm gonna go in and apply her low light. And again, this is 5N6G, a nice chocolate brown. Love this shade. So I'm gonna close a couple and then I'm gonna not close just to improve my time. And we're gonna go right through this process. So she already looks really good in here. So instead of foiling every single low light, I'm just gonna do uh, a little bit of a reserve in between. Typically I go back to back on her, but we don't need to because her goal isn't to be super uh, dark with a low light. She's still gonna have a lot of contrast, but there's no need to pull through again. And then it's gonna allow her low lights in between to just brighten up over time. So instead of low lighting this, this is where I'm gonna start the lightening process. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm gonna do a baby highlight on the edge of each highlight chunk. Chunk is a technical term. Perfect. So I'm gonna dust through a little bit. Just lighten those hairs. Close that up. So what you're gonna see in this clip of me just foiling away <laughs> is that I always take very, very tiny see-through sections and I'd rather go back to back with my foils to create a chunkier look than to add more hair in the foil. It is critical that you do not add too much hair into the foil or else you're gonna get uneven lift not a strong enough lift, bleed marks, splotchiness. You know, when the hair pulls warm or doesn't lift enough, usually it's because the section size is too big. So if you're a stylist behind the chair and you're looking to get those bright blondes that don't even need a toner, you can always tone everything to make it, you know, give it the finishing touch, but the blondes that don't require you to correct anything, the key really is small, clean sections. Just working super clean, taking tiny sections to make sure that you get that lift. The lift is in the section size, I swear you guys. It is going to help so much. If you find that your highlights aren't close enough to the root, if you find that you're getting that little band at the edge of your foil, if you find that they're just not getting light enough, try taking smaller sections. And I know it takes longer, but the more foils you do over time, the faster you will get. So with that practice and your dexterity is going to give you way better skill. So don't be afraid to take tiny, tiny, tiny sections and get nice and close to the scalp. And don't be afraid to saturate. You don't want to saturate too much at the baseline, you know, right at the base of the foil. That's how we can get a bleed mark as well. 
but you want to make sure that you're saturating the hair enough so that it will actually lift. And in my full length video and mastermind, I go through a lot of this and so much more during the application so that you can, you know, learn a lot more about these color techniques. But I hope that you love this YouTube video. I'm going to start posting some mastermind clips in here so that you can get some education for free. I really, uh, I do love giving free education to the industry and helping elevate the beauty industry the best that I can. So if you love my free education, great. Thank you for being here and supporting me. Please share it with your friends. And I also have my podcast, the Gina Bianca podcast. So if you're looking for more free education, check that out. And and if you're looking to join Mastermind, my online education and coaching group, that is where I do coaching with hairstylists every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern. We do live coaching on Zoom, and then we have tons of business classes and technical right. content. So now let's pull everything back so she's nice and comfortable the whole time. And while doing this, we're going to check for bleeds. I know my guest runs a little warm. Love her. But if they're warm or if the heat of their forehead or face cause bleed marks, that's so normal. So just be mindful. So great. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome, so that is our application. She looks beautiful and I can't wait to show you the results. All right, so I'm pulling all the foils and I decided not to tone her. And you might see the result and be like, I would have toned her, why didn't you tone her? Me, 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 tone her. And to each their own. If you want to tone everybody any specific colors or whatever, it's your guest, your choice. I chose no toner to keep her nice and bright and to save some time. And I love to see what you think of the results. Be sure to comment below. All right, so we just finished. As you can see, her hair is amazing. We got it nice and bright. Her money piece is literally killing me. I love it. And her low lights are a tad lighter. She's nice and bright. And we did not use any toner on her at all. But because we used small sections, it gave her that perfect lift. Looks so good.